Okay, we're back in the cube live. It's like seven o'clock. Pat, you're late. Six thirty. <laughs> we're at Pat Gelsinger, uh, president of EMC Products. Uh, any new titles since uh, we last met? I don't think so, but I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the cube, Pat. Uh, welcome back for the fifth time. You're our, our, our most favorite guest in the MC. Well, scary. You've been on. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Dave Vellante with Wikibon.org. So keep coming back. So yeah. In fact, you coming back and get points for that. So, big day. You're up early at the gym. Dave saw you working out. Big keynote. Joe Tucci was up there. Joe was doing his thing, telling his stories. You had to come and deliver the, the meat. Um, but EMC World here in Vegas, you guys are celebrating cloud meets big data. Very relevant theme. Some big announcements. Some sizzle and some steak. Mm -hmm. So, let's just jump right in. Dave. The sizzle is Hadoop. Hadoop, we've been data. talking about Hadoop all day. Pat, we were talking off camera, you said there was some interest in that, but that's all we've been talking about. Uh -huh. And um, you know, our feeling was, look, there's a lot of ways you could have done this, but it was a real signal to the marketplace that you're extremely serious <laughs> about Hadoop, right? Um, talk a little bit about like why now, why the big move to basically have your own distribution? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, several things happen. One is we just, there's just a lot of activity in the space. Right, it's just amazing the amount of different open source projects going on, right, you know, new file system, new tools on top of Hadoop, right, new analytics environments. So there's just energy around it in the marketplace, and at the heart of all of it is Hadoop. We also found that a lot of customers were had Green Plum and were also using Hadoop. Right, they might use it for data inloading, they might do some portions of the work there, they might do some in Green Plum, so we're finding a lot of common customers. So we said, boy, you know, let's really go start exploring this. And we looked at different partnership opportunities, right, different ways to go about it, and at the end of the day, we said, boy, you know, we just want to jump in with both feet. This is hot, right, and as we tested customers on the idea of our distribution, us delivering an appliance, right, us integrating it as part of our overall data family, just got an incredible resonance from customers. So, you know, we're jumping in with both feet, baby. Yeah, clearly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we saw it and said, well, this is, uh, this is a serious move by EMC. There were a lot of ways to potentially play this. So that, that's interesting, the intersection between Green Plum and Hadoop. You've seen mm -hmm. that a lot in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so, but that's a different model than the sort of, you know, Ruby on Rails crowd, if you will, right? I mean, that's more of an enterprise play, is that right? Or? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to classify it that way because, you know, part of the appeal of Hadoop is this open source thing. Right, I can grab it, I can go start playing with it, but when enterprises want to go now look at it, the CIO says, okay, who's going to support this thing? You know, what's the code, what's the distribution, how am I going to deliver and support it? Right, so you go from being this thing that you got a few crazies in the open source world to saying, wow, how am I going to really productize and deliver this in a meaningful way? And as we've talked to them, they said, boy, you know, making it part of Greenplum makes sense. I'm usually doing analytics, right, as well as unstructured queries, right, in some, you know, sort of workflow process. They're very interested in the appliance offering from us. Yeah. And as they understand what we're doing with virtualization, our management environment, the chorus tools on top of it, they say, boy, you know, we're adding value above, we're adding value beside, and delivering in a common infrastructure with appliances, they say, boy, value underneath. Yeah, you talked about the stack in your keynote, and you're going right at the heart of the stack and then yeah. building around that. So we're very excited about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so my question on, the, on this is that in the market that we're seeing, we're seeing a, a collision, a collision between you know, the production systems that want to go to the cloud and get that economies of scales, the OpEx and the value benefit to it. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing in the news, Amazon crashing, PlayStation getting hacked, some serious big iron systems getting compromised. And then you got the sandbox of Silicon Valley, innovation, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so Hadoop represents that creation, that entrepreneurship, and it's still early. And there's an ecosystem developing. Mm -hmm. EMC's partnering heavily in, the, in, in, in general. How are you looking at Hadoop with Apache? It's mm -hmm. open source. Uh, what's your ecosystem strategy there? Yeah, well we announced, I think we had about a dozen partners that were announcing support for our Hadoop distribution. Right, we had big names, Informatica and SAP as part of that, VMware as part of it, and then a bunch of little guys, some of the key startup guys as well. So, you know, we're going to be very aggressive embracing the community, right, and having them work with us on our distribution. Right, secondly, we're fully committed to the open source community, right, the work that we do will roll back into Apache as well, right, because we've seen this, you know, bubbling cauldron, right, of activity around Hadoop, and we're going to keep it bubbling, right? We're going to keep contributing, participating with it. We're hiring several of the key committers are joining our team as well. You know, we're fully committed to making that, right, you know, open source community very effective and as well. Still, people are comparing it to Linux, but Linux was, was early on, it was formed within the community, and then people had different versions. Hadoop's still vulnerable. Yeah, you know, there's or is one. It? You guys well, th will make there is it more different. 
there is different trees today, and actually we're seeing that potentially fracturing. You know, it's one of our concerns, so one of the efforts that we want to do is make sure the community comes together, right? And, you, and we really see that it's important for us, right, with Cloudera, IBM, and we're really reaching out to them saying, okay, how can we make sure that we, you know, have a common distribution tree over time? Because, you know, there's a Facebook, there's a Yahoo, an IBM, Cloudera, right, now ours, right? We really want to make sure that we agree on common standards, interfaces, et cetera. So you'll see us doing more in that area as well to make sure that it doesn't fracture over time because we do see this criticality of keeping the open source innovation alive and well. That's a delicate balance, isn't it? I mean, oh, absolutely. And then, because at the end of the day, I mean, you use the, you use the, John used the Linux analogy, you got, you know, Red Hat and Suse, and you know, those are the guys that make, made a lot of the money and everybody else sort of fought over the scraps. And yeah. presumably you're going all in to mm -hmm. be one of the leaders. You want to be number one or number two, yeah. right? Right. That's so a validation to the market space, too. Yeah. I mean, you guys yeah. essentially validate Cloudera's business model and all the other competitors are mm -hmm. out there now. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? I'm excited <laughs> about it. We're getting great interest from great it. Great stuff. We love right. it. And you know, I guess one more point as well. EMC isn't a big open source player, right? You know, how many big open source things has EMC done? Yeah, you know, name them. I can't really yeah. name any. You know, we have a little bit that we've done, and clearly Spring has been very open source on the VMware side. But you know, for us, this is saying, okay, you know, we really are going to participate with the open source community in a very substantive way, and this is a strong commitment. In an organic way as well, I yeah. mean, well, really. We, well, I mean, Pat, we've been following your, your career at EMC since you joined, and you know, we notice Green Plum is kind of your baby. So, we know how you think. You're an ecosystem thinker, right? You understand ecosystems. Obviously, at Intel, you've been there, right? Mm -hmm. You understand that market-making systems approach. Um, there's been a lot of debates about this systems architecture in the cloud. VM world, we saw that, you talked about that. What's changing now, and what's changed in the past year, and what's your outlook for this, I don't want to say consolidation, but more of a, of a infrastructure operating system? Uh -huh. Or do you see that, or can you comment? Well, you know, we do clearly see the convergence of the underlying infrastructure. That's what vBlock is about, right? Saying, you know, boy, you know, you don't necessarily, CIOs don't get a whole lot of value from putting together the Tinker Toys anymore. So we'll do that for you. So we really do see that bringing together. And increasingly, and you know, the demo that I did at the end of the keynote, right, was very much sort of giving that idea. Boy, you know, it becomes more malleable, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, what's a storage array? It has an x86 processor in it, right? It has some network, some disk as part of it, you know, and we're going to start moving stuff around more and that, you know, VM layer really is the data center wide operating system and we're going to stretch it, right, across arrays and server farms to be able to, you know, have much more intelligent, right, ability to move workloads around, right, within the data center as well as across data centers as well. So, converging the infrastructure, extending that data center wide uh, operating layer and really creating a much much larger set of resources that we're able to manage and operate across, provision, drive our infrastructure. So you, you could make a pretty good business out of sort of filling gaps with appliances. I mean, you the data domain, you know, uh, Greenplum, uh, Isilon, you could argue, does that as well. But I think I'm hearing your goal is to be a systems company, is that right? Well, with the VCE partnership, I am a systems company, right? You know, don't be confused, right? You know, we're, you know, we have created a new category of infrastructure, converged infrastructure, right? You know, and with uh, Cisco and VMware, that is the new building block of the data center, right? And guess what? We are competing heads up, right, versus HP, Matrix, right, IBM, Cloudburst, right? They are responding to our leadership as the next generation converged infrastructure systems company. Yeah, we've said on the cube frequently that we think it's a two horse race, really. I mean, HP and, and, and EMC are really the, the two companies going at this. I mean, you see an opportunity, you're aggressively competing there. Others, you know, you can argue play, but we see it as an enormous, you know, so potential. Play. Let's talk about uh, the products in more detail. I want to address the um, fun side of it, which is, getting things faster, cheaper, more performance, which is your MO, right? And the systems thing too. But, but more importantly, uh, we're getting a lot of talk about Facebook, this new environment. Um, the data center's moving around, talking about VPlex. Um, Fusion IO is going public. And mm -hmm. so disk is changing, storage is changing. Um, and there's more Facebooks emerging. You know, Amazon can't support big startups like Bank of America yeah, and yeah. financial Mm -hmm. institutions. So the cloud is evolving. This is really where it's act, the action is. So, so the product's got to in, embed these new technologies. 
how are you going to meet that, like say Flash, for example, mm -hmm. and that roadmap of getting faster products out there? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that we're working on, and it really is a fun time in that in that sense, right? Because there's just so much innovation going on, new companies emerging, new technologies emerging. You know, I sort of say five years ago the data center was boring. Now it's become a pretty exciting place, right? You know, so it's a lot of fun in that regard. Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm an infrastructure guy. Chuck Hollis wrote that in his blog post today. The storage is sexy again. <laughs> Notice the word again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, back to the future. Um, and in it, you know, clearly we're cranking up our uh, engine of innovation, right? We're going faster. We're driving it more quickly. And with that, you you say, boy, what are the ingredients? Right, we said it's x86 virtualization and flash are these key new technology ingredients. Obviously today our lightning announcement, right, is saying, boy, there's you know, we're not just gonna be the storage array side, yeah. we're also gonna do it I mean, in the server. I mean, lightning side. lightning implies speed, right? Fast, less lightning. I mean mobility and, and data, it's not about big data too, it's fast data. You need low latency performance. Yeah. It's always gonna be pushing the envelope with mm -hmm. you know, I mean you're seeing LTE phones doing twenty six meg down, yeah. you know, yeah. five meg up on the on the Verizon and so it's gonna get faster on the network side. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. So these devices have to handle data flow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's not the old EMC. The products have to change. Uh, and well, what, what's a, a DCA, right? The Green Plum Appliance, right? You know, boy, you know, it's a you know, local set of disks or flash, right? It has SSD versions, right? Local connectivity and you know, enormous ingest rates into the compute, right? That's part of that appliance, right? You know, it's sort of like a little mini data center Right, extremely high performance. Right, you know, uh, you yeah. know, platform in the industry. You know, we're making it pretty fast. Right? Are you guys responding to opportunities more quickly? I mean, I, my sense is, I mean, at, at, at maybe ten years ago, EMC was rather slow to respond to some of the trends. They held on to some of their architectures, but it seems like you're really going after it hard. Either buying companies like you did with Isilon, just doing the the, the, the the smart thing, grabbing the company now, it's the leader, or what are you doing with Lightning? I mean, you could you could argue maybe you're a little late, but the move that you're making, the vision that you're putting forth is pretty comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Is that a deliberate change, or is that more just uh, the cultural shift because you got more DNA from startups, or what's happening there? Is that oh. something that, that you've tried to bring in? Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah. Right, to some degree, it's all, all of the above. And, uh, you know, obviously, hey, you know, I'm me showing up at the company, I'm helping, but it's very much, right, a broader uh, team play inside of EMC. Clearly, you know, bringing companies like uh, Green Plum and Isilon uh, and Data Domain into the company, these West Coast companies, a new cultural aspect as well. And clearly, from Joe and the leadership team down, right, we just see this enormous opportunity. What we've laid out, right, with cloud and big data, man, these are just dramatic, dislocative shifts in the industry, and we see the company is so well positioned, right, with, re with regard to those shifts that it's sort of like, you know, now is the time to act, right? You know, we just see this uh, opportunity to seize the day, right? You know, carpe diem, right? We see yeah. it right in front of us now, and if we don't uh, seize it, right, we really see that, uh, you know, the, the one of the greatest opportunities that EMC may, may have ever had in our history Right, might not be realized. Yeah. Hey, so. very aggressive, and and you're another another systems play, really. I mean, throughout the I/O stack, really, and then even closer to the processor. And mm -hmm. although they say the best I/O is no I/O, <laughs> you're a systems guy, right? You know that. But yeah. still, it's again interesting setup, going after what what is an opportunity. John mentioned the Fusion I/O IPO, yeah. billion dollar plus, and EMC just not sitting back and waiting. I mean, you yeah. guys had a good year. I mean, Pat, last year on the Cube, you said, you know, I'm humble, going to get to know what's going on. And then the mega launch, you were really hitting full stride. You have a good command of the products. It a lot, lot, lot happened yeah, this every year. Every once in a while, it almost seems like I'm a storage guy. Right? Yeah. It's, it's just a facade. It's really yeah. not true. You, you, so. did, you did good for yourself last year. But going forward, you know the sizzle and the steak we talked about. You know that Hadoop and the big data is very sexy. It's very, it's very yeah. sizzly. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, if you have sizzle, you hope to have the steak. Yeah, and that's right. the real meat and potatoes. And that what we're what we're hearing is the cloud has evolved now with with all these stories about Amazon crashing and the PlayStation mm -hmm. hack and even RSA got hacked and you know, <clears throat> EMC company. Um, yeah. These are big institutional players. So the cloud is a pathway for, these, for the clients and that business is booming. People are making money and doing good business. Virtualization's hit a tipping point where a lot of deployments. You got to be happy with that part of the business in the yeah. sense that the cloud has a re-engineering opportunity for the data center. It's yeah. really happening. Can you talk more detail around how you see that and what's happened and what's going to happen this year? Yeah, well, you know, the strategy we tried to describe is very focused around hybrid, right? And with that, it's sort of saying, let's re-architect the internal data center, the private cloud, 
right, let's get the same ingredients available through service providers and service offerings, public cloud, but allow them to easily on-ramp and off-ramp between each other, right? And I described the three technologies that we're focused on to make that possible, management, you know, federation, and security. Right, because you have to be able to manage across those resource pools. We demonstrated that with UIM today, right, and vCloud yep. Director being able to move across the environments. You have to be able to federate. I have to be able to move data around. You know, moving a few gigabytes of VMs, no big deal. Moving a few terabytes of storage, oh. Right, you have to be able to do that in Petabytes. a intelligent way. Yeah, right, and that's where VPlex comes into play. And then laying out the security vision, right, with RSA and what we're doing there, announcement of Cloud Trust Authority, the Net Witness acquisition, clearly trying to build the assets for the next generation security stack uh, of the future. So those are the big things that we're doing. And I was really happy today because we had, you know, announcements like the CSC announcement. Right, where CSC says, hey, you know, you know we will happily provide management services for VBlox on your premise, Right, we will also federate with services that we are managing for you, and we're able to demonstrate that as a real service offering. To me, that's real with a, with a track record too. I yeah. mean, we're, they're seeing. We talked to CSC; they were in the cube, and a lot of consultancies. I mean, we're now into. I know folks who started companies two and a half years ago who were, you know, struggling. You know, getting getting business going. Now they're expanding. Uh, people are making money, and you know, every oh, yeah, cycle yeah. has that point where, yeah, yeah. wow. Money's being made, mm -hmm. business is being done, right. there's commerce being done. Mm -hmm. The cloud is, seems to be hitting that point. Yeah, Clefly is hitting that inflection point where it's no longer you know, those crazies over there. Right? It's now like, oh, people are doing real business here. Right? And you know, what you're seeing, and I, and I find this so fascinating, every system integrator, every outsourcer, every telco right, is becoming a service provider of some sort. And every ISV as yeah, well, a SaaS yeah. player. Every one of those is transforming their business models as we speak. Right, and as this humble infrastructure company, we just want to help them all on their way. Now, how's that, uh, <laughs> I'm sure. How, but, uh, related to that, how's it changing, or is it changing your pricing model at all? Are you sharing in that sort of pay-as-you-go model? Or? Well, you know, clearly we're having to learn how to you know, morph our business relationships as well. Now, for the most part, we continue to build products, sell products. You know, that's the heart of our business model, right? But you know, we do service, uh, you know, storage, uh, managed services as well, right? We're sort of okay. You know, we're going to manage it for our customers, right? We have some customers who want to change, you know, licensing models for right software products, and VMware has adjusted some of their offerings in that respect. So, you know, we're adjusting along the way, but we're not as front and center to that as some of the real SaaS providers of the service offerings in it. You know, we sort of end up sort of being underneath or behind right, the service providers. And that's really what we want to do. We want to partner with them. Right? We're not out to be like an IBM, HP, Dell, right, who are competing with them. Fundamentally, they are our partners. They are a much bigger route to market for us. But, so, but at the same time, they don't want to absorb all that pay as you go, right? Because that's more risk to them. Will you willing to share that risk with them? And, well, and do you see the day where you might be willing to get more creative about how you how you price, particularly with those guys who are willing it's to partner. It's actually interesting um, because we're finding, you know, the telcos, you know, they got capital. Yep. You know, and, and to some degree, you know, if we start a pay-as-you-go discussion, right, they said, boy, you know, I, I do billions of dollars of capital. That's what I do. There's right? no value there. Yeah, there's not a not a lot of value. Mm -hmm. It's just financing uh, at that point. And we do financial services. Hey, you want us to finance us? Hey, we'll go do that. You know, we're very creative in some of our global financial service offerings. You know, but fundamentally, we're not seeing right at the infrastructure layer where they say, boy, I need a different business model. So we're not seeing some of the lunacy right of the internet bubble error at the beginning of the decade. Certainly in the software pricing models, that's where it affects. Right, and there you really are seeing people say, boy, how many VMs am I going to need this week? Right, you know, it might be 1,000 at the beginning of the week, it might be 10,000 at the end of the week, there might be big ones, little ones. You know, certainly in the software layer, things are being transformed in the business model relationships in a much more significant way. That affects VMware a little bit more than EMC, but the EMC side also. And that's kind of a zero-sum game anyway, right? The, the software vendors will always figure out how to reprice and rebalance and, and hit, hit you know, an equilibrium. Some will be slow to yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. know, oh, how many processor cores and right sockets, pricing and all this Sounds kind like of horrible. stuff. So they'll eventually get yeah. there. Yeah, eventually. Maintenance <laughs> might be a different story. Uh, eventually yeah. they'll get there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oracle's already there. <laughs> some, will go, some will go kicking oh, yeah. and screaming, Oracle's very some good will embrace this. it. So. Yeah, yeah, they get this net contract value increase <laughs> model very well. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we talked about VPlex before, so you've, you've solved the uh, speed of light problem, you've announced VPlex Global shipping and and uh, you saw the speed of light problem for some use cases sometimes right yes, is yeah, that yeah is that right is, yeah uh, and uh, you know we will continue to expand it it continues to be block only 
right? So we're going to add file over time uh, to it. We're just enriching the use cases, HA and DR capabilities, right? We announced the witness elements of the VPlex family as well today. We'll eventually virtualize it. You know, we'll just build it into some of our product lines as well. But uh, you know, VPlex to me is just one of those cool technologies. Hmm. Moving VMs, okay. I know I need to communicate. Moving storage, that's magic. So I'm really excited about the long-term potential there. Yeah, good. All right, when, uh, we've got to touch all bases here. VNXE, you know, we, we saw that at the mega launch. We had Jeremy's son. You know, <laughs> Edward, yeah. So simple that even Edward could do it on his yeah, iPad. Yeah. And uh, first of all, how's it going? And, and then what's next, right? I mean, uh, is, is that going to be the platform of the future? Well, you know, so VNXE, right, it's very much about a tool for us to reach to those lower price points. And at those lowest price points, it's channel. Right, not EMC strong point historically, right, and it's very much how do we enable just a massive expansion of our channel uh, relationships. So, right, in the first uh, four months of the year, we've uh, literally doubled our number of channel partners that EMC has. Mm -hmm. So a huge channel onboarding, right, you know, getting the products, enabling them, the training uh, through them, right, the simplicity of the uh, ordering, right, the software bundling that are going uh, with it. So far we say we're positive, we're encouraged, we're seeing it have the market impact we want, but it's still early. Now, from here, right, we're just going to continue, right, to press. You know, today it's below 10K, we're going to keep going down, right? We're just going to continue to expand the product family, continue to expand its global reach, and continue to put more value added into the app integration and the simplicity of management, as well as the service relationship back up the wire as well, so that our uh, uh, channel partners have more and more opportunity to make money when they sell VNXE. Good. Excellent, so we're here with Pat Gelsinger, President, COO, EMC Products Group, and uh, late night cube operation here, John. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great, I mean, he's, look at, he's, the, he's under no pressure to go anywhere, he's going to hang with us. <laughs> <laughs> How I about those Celtics, dates tonight, they win? Right? <laughs> no, we don't know. Are you having dinner tonight? <laughs> well, yeah, two more dinners tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you said go to bed early? <laughs> yeah, you got to be kidding, right? So, so how you, how you feeling year. about uh, the EMC brand right now? Because EMC brand right now is pretty high. Yeah, um, yeah. You guys are doing well, I mean, um, the, the positioning, Jeremy's done a fantastic job with mm -hmm. uh, last year in the QB said, I like, I'm like into messaging. Mm -hmm. I think he's into a messaging. Yeah. Cloud yeah. means big data is everywhere all over the uh -huh. place. But, uh -huh. but it's a good, relevant message. Um, as you guys morph and transform the company, how do you see EMC transforming as a brand to your customers? Because we had that conversation earlier with Jim Bampos, and he's like, that's changing too. Mm -hmm. What do you want the EMC brand to be? Well, in some ways, we want it to be exactly what it is today. You know, we want it to be the most trusted brand in the data center, right? You know, hey, you know, your server goes down, you reboot it, right? You know, you lose some network packets, okay, you retry, right? So you can't lose the data, right? And our customers have essentially, you know, almost the sacred contract with us, right, as their leading, most trusted member of the data center. So that's a piece of our brand that you don't want to lose. We're also seen as the most customer-centric brand. Right, boy, you know, you have an issue, it's a five alarm fire at EMC. And you know, just that a maniacal focus on customers. The things that it hasn't been is necessarily low price, right? You know, and that's things like VNXE. We're going to satisfy all of your compute needs. It hasn't been converged infrastructure, right? This whole set, right, of changing and innovating this entirely and new you're also model not of the known, data center. You're not, haven't traditionally been known for making jumps into Hadoop. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that's a big, Move mm -hmm. for EMC. Yeah, yeah, a we're slow embracing. battleship. You guys are in there getting mm -hmm. in early. Yeah, absolutely. That's exciting. I mean, that yeah. is really. Yeah, it was you know, fun. I was at a. Yeah, you'll get a kick out of this. I had a C, I was in a CIO's meeting, and he was asking me about Green Plum and tell me about this big data stuff and what you're working on and stuff like that. And I said, Well, you know, we did a thorough analysis of all the assets of the industry, and you know, looked at it very carefully, architecturally, scale up, scale out, transactional analytic, right, row, column, you know, and went through that, you know, the whole little speech I give on the subject, right? And we pick Green Plum as head and shoulders above everybody else. And he says, you know, IBM came in here and they said that about Natiza and, you know, they're here about Paracel and they're here about Asterday, you know, so like that. Everybody said that. I says, but the difference is I moved first. Right, it stopped the conversation. He says, you're right, you did. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. else could pick the best asset because I had already taken it off the market. 
yeah, yeah. right? And similarly with Isilon, the best asset. And, you, and you're continuing to, to scour the landscape, I'm yeah. sure, and you won't tell us the list, who's on the short list, uh, Cloudera, Yahoo's got to spin well, out. Yeah. Well, we know you always go after number one or number two, so if you tell us the market, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> 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 but it's off, you know, it's picking the market, right, moving at the right time in the marketplace as well. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so it really is uh, being able to, it's you know. It's growth strategy, too. You have to have a, you know, a organic growth strategy that requires some planning. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to make a power move like an M&A deal. Yeah, and it really is both. And it's really, you know, engaging and, you know, the venture community with EMC Ventures, it's working, uh, you know, much more aggressively with universities. We're expanding our programs there. And of course, you know, dr you know cranking up our How's own organic engine. your relationship with the VCs in Silicon Valley right now? Very good. Like Very you, good. You have good conversations with these guys. Actually, oh, you bought yeah. a couple companies from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, data right, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm loving you guys. Yeah, we, we take, nice we, ones, we, yeah. <laughs> Green yeah, we plum, take, data Yeah, you know, we take companies off the market. They're pretty happy with us. So, it's sort of, you know, we have good conversations. Which ones are your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about no security a little bit. Um, you had said earlier that you feel like long-term security in the cloud can be even stronger, even better than yeah, it is today. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've actually said that. I've written about that. But there, there's no evidence today. There's no proof points today, and it's yet the cloud keeps growing. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's almost like the the uh, uh, benefits of the cloud outweigh the risks. So that's yeah. good news. Uh -huh. You know, but uh -huh. at the same time, it doesn't seem like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. We don't feel more secure. If anything, we feel less secure year after year after year. Is is security a a, a do over? Well, uh, some of what I covered in the speech today was in fact that we think it's a do over, right? You know that we are on this uh, cusp of just a radical architectural shift uh, in security, right? This idea of moving from physical boundaries to logical boundaries and using the VM, right, as an ability to contain, manage, define policies and associate it security at a granularity you never could before. We also have to move away from these signature-based things that are fairly static, right? You can't, you know, malle it to a risk-based, right? That's constantly adapting to, right, the real-life characteristics that are mm -hmm. uh, underway. We also see that, right, it has to become, right, this environment where it's policy-based, right? You're able to associate policy and actions in real time, right? In some of these analytic environments that you're establishing, you know, literally, you keep a track of every packet that goes over the network and analyzing, right, the signal and not the noise for these low, slow threats. Right, because these are very, very sophisticated attacks mm. that are coming in. Right, you know, it's not like a bunch of teenagers that are doing some denial of service attack. Right, these are sophisticated, right, you know, crime based, right, you know, S nation states, nation. Yeah, yeah man, you know, it's incredible stuff that's going on. So the sophistication, yeah. mm. right, needs to be done there as well. So we really think that is a dramatic shift, and that's really, you know, how I try to position the keynote today. You know, right. there and are just and a lot fundamental of the, a lot shifts. of the commodity discussions around commoditization and pricing and usage based pricing works well for utility-like stuff, you know, yeah. water, mm -hmm. electricity. But when you get into the crown jewels of an enterprise like data, which is, has twofold value. One, it's, it's pr the privacy version, I guess, is the, is the value of the data. But data as a value proposition, the analytics side of the business, this is, this is crown jewels. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's worth a lot. So, yeah, it really yeah, is that the privacy issue? Is, you know, I mean, look at well, Facebook, privacy is a big issue for them because yeah. the data is floating around out mm -hmm. there. Now, are you hearing that discussion from your CIO customers that you talk to? I mean, we talk about security all the time, but you don't hear as much about privacy. Of course, you, you see a lot of it in the news with mm -hmm. Facebook and Google Android and mm -hmm. Apple iPhones following us around. I mean, is it a non-issue because it's the enterprise because they own the data? Or Well, it depends. It, more? it depends. It's a, it's a bit more sophisticated, the conversation. Enterprise customers aren't as concerned about privacy as the consumer customers are, as you'd expect, yeah. like, like the Apple event and so on. But if you're in Europe, it's a very different story yeah, because right. the privacy laws there are very strong. and. When you go look at the privacy type issues, they, been, they generally end up being you know, multi-tenant, multi -tenant, role-based authentication architectural problems. Yeah, okay, right? so. You know, so they sort of have the same yeah. sort of architectural profile when you look at them, right? I need to be able to have people manage data without being able to look at it. I need to be able to have role-based you know, uh, uh, capabilities to be able to authenticate who can actually manage things versus who can look at them. I need to be able to have delegation. I need to be able to have multi-tenant separation. So the architectural model is actually very similar, right? Independent of whether it's a public cloud, a private cloud. You know, my private cloud maybe finance can't screw around with manufacturing when it's the end of the when of the quarter, right? You know, and there may be a lot of those types of things uh, going on. So we see a very similar architectural template, right? That we need to approach the problem. Okay. With. So if you're saying if you can solve the architectural problem for security, privacy, 
flows along with it. Yeah, it just comes along as part of that as well. That's logical too. You mentioned the physical logical changeover is not a simple edge-based authentication method via yeah. some device. Uh -huh. I mean, now the interface that, that's evolving is very consumer-like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the inter iPad to mobile to mm -hmm. maybe an Xbox. Maybe yeah. an IT guy is uh -huh. playing Xbox with his friends mm -hmm. and then needs to go check his email yeah. or yeah. do work. Yeah. The interface right. might be the Xbox. Right, and the, and the devices become almost impossible to tell if they're in the consumer experience or the business experience. I mean, you know, do I clearly only use my you know, uh, Mac Air right, for work? Well, no, right? I do my Gmail on it, and then I do my Outlook mail on it, this right? This is why the Stack you know, Wars conversation is really interesting because you're really talking about you know, full stack in, uh, changeover, mm -hmm. you know, enabling infrastructure, enabling a new app framework, which includes virtualization. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, we talked about that at many cubes, but the virtualization at the desktop is hot right now uh -huh, uh -huh. because of a lot of these factors. Um, what's your vision around virtualization at the desktop? Um, just in general, how's that going? Uh -huh. You know, well, virtualization at the desktop is sort of a, a sort of narrow view of the problem, right? So you can run VDI on your desktop. So what, right? Because the real issue is is that uh, you know the the zoo has exploded, right? With all the devices right. that you have, right? You know, customers now want you know they want that service being delivered on an iPad, an iPhone, right? You know, an Android device, a RIM device, etc. So. You know, you, know, you end up having to generalize the problem and saying, how can I deliver applications and data, you know, authentication mechanisms, mm -hmm. right, you know, protection, right, through a wide range of devices. And this is causing essentially a re-architecture of the entire client model. And it looks more VDI-like, but it needs to be richer than that because I need yeah. to support this very broad range right, it has of devices. Very dynamic, almost like, you know, branch office authentication in the old days, mm -hmm. remember? You now had diversity of yeah, access. But, access. Yeah, but not everybody's on a 3270 or a VT100 <laughs> terminal, man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you got this rich set of devices. So with here's Rack F on the back end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> interesting question for you. Thanks so much for spending time with us here. And we really appreciate it. Well, thank uh, but you. But the question I want to ask is, what gets you excited? And I know you're at a long day today and a lot of things going on, but the personal side of Pat Gelsinger. Because a year ago you were humble, you know, coming into the EMC. I'm no longer humble, is no, that you're, what you're telling no, you're, me? You're, you're, full on, <laughs> really, you're full on throttling the, the products. It's uh -huh. very clear you got command of the action, which is great. What you, what's next? I mean, what's the what's the energy level? What's the inside ticking like for Pat Gelsinger? Well, you know, when you think about, you know, I think about the three or four big things that we're doing in the storage industry. You know, we're not in, we're not satisfied being the biggest player. We want to be a lot bigger, right? So it's just saying, boy, what do I got to take to just become fifty plus percent share of storage, right? When you go say in this hybrid. Right, model. We're just at the nascent stages of being able to do this management, security, and data federation, and so on. It's just a, you know, a whole new world. And then, right, when you go say the security models associated with that, boy, you know, just a radical new architecture going to occur. And then finally, the data layer, right? You know, the entire world of database, business analytics, business intelligence, data warehousing today, a seventy billion dollar market that we're going to transform in a fundamental way. Man, you go think about the kind of things that are possible that result, and I touched on a few of them in the speech today, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, we're all of a sudden, boy, you could just do analytics and answer questions that never before could even be thought about, right? And now you can just sort of iteratively crawl through petabytes of data and start asking questions about, you know, weather change or disease or so on. You know, someday soon you're going to wake up and your, and your phone's going to tell you, I was monitoring you all night long, I checked your DNA against other relevant DNA databases, and I think you should go to the doctor today because I think there was a heart right, abnormality last, last night that we looked against right this big data database, and it's a good day for you to stop by. What's the inhibitors for this vision? I mean, first of all, we, I love the vision, everyone, how can you not? It's provocative, but it, it makes sense. What's the inhibitors? I mean, what's the, what are the, I want to say roadblocks or stumbling blocks, because maybe it's nascent, yes, but is it just time? Is it certain configurations, the stars got to line up a certain way, or? Uh -huh. What's holding us back from getting there faster? Well, you fundamentally, you know, technology innovation sort of builds on technology innovation, right? You know, it's not like you know we've done anything magic, right? But we've stood on the shoulders of the magic that's occurred, and every one of time you do that, you're able to sort of take it to the next level. Clearly, there's some inhibitors around, you know, some of the things we talked about. Clearly, security, right? You know, clearly some of these service models and you know how it's going to work. Customer right? mindset. 
yeah. budgets. <laughs> right, you know, and you have, you know, sort of, you know, IT sort of managed and work this way, right? And the people and business process issues are some of the hardest and slowest ones to change yeah. uh, in many cases. You know, there's often issues, you know, regulatory and governmental issues as well. You know, sorry, my, my data can't leave this state, right? Or leave this data center uh, as well. So there's all sorts of those challenges. And maybe as we think about maybe some of the most transformative things that are occurring, you know, is in the healthcare area, which is some of the most regulatorily difficult, right? And actually the IT least penetrated areas of the industry. So many, many challenges, but you know, fundamentally underneath it, right there are these you know, powerful engines of innovation. I always sort of go back and say, look, Moore's law hasn't slowed down. It's just enabling, right, computing and networking and storage, and that continues to you know, enable just absolutely disruptive technologies in the industry. So EMC is a culture changing, obviously, since you've been there, we've noticed uh, you know, a, a different kind of presence. EMC, a very Boston, New England company, now has, yes. you're, out, you're out here, <laughs> uh, Jeremy Burton's out here. I didn't put my tie on, I'm we sorry. Got you got yeah, the West yeah, Coast yeah, board yeah. to put on a suit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I only wear this for the Cube, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, anyway, you're out in California, a lot of California presence out here. Mm -hmm. Is that a part of the strategy, just because the executives are here, and I know you're bi-coastal, mm -hmm. um, so how's that? Working out. Is there any? Is it just ironic that it's that way, or well, is there a plan? You know, if, if you want to go to the hub of the IT industry, where do you go? It's not Boston anymore. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, you know, as much as you might say, and yes. you know, it's not uh, China, right? It's not Taiwan. You know, they're important pieces of the industry, but the hub of IT is in Silicon Valley. Right, and you know, if you want to be, you know, on the leading edge, you want to yeah. know what's really going on. You want to be networking and facilitating. You got to be in the valley, right? And if you look at the companies we've acquired, VMware, Documentum, Data Domain, Green Plum, right? You know, they're in the valley, yeah. right? And you got to have a lot of presence there, right? Whether it's the venture community, whether it's the research community at Stanford or Berkeley, right? You got to be there to make. And it. there's early, it's early signaling coming out of the valley too. And, and yeah. if, you, if you can read the tea leaves, mm -hmm. and there's a formula there. If you have a good relationship. Yeah the VCs and you could kind of get in there and you know I love living there I mean I'm in Palo Alto and it's it's um, you know it's the great place to live as an entrepreneur it's a sandbox yeah and yeah. and the children yeah. are creating yeah. um, just to be clear we're not moving headquarters for EMC it's still a <laughs> but we certainly have and you know my staff almost half of my staff is on the West Coast what's the secret um, for playing in the sandbox in Silicon Valley and in innovation sandboxes because you know you been on the technical side, you've been on the product side, uh, as the Intel's been a platform, EMC's new to this whole enabling platform business. How do you play nicely in the sandbox? When I mean, you're going now with Hadoop, it's a big issue, you know? Mm -hmm. How are you going to play with the other children uh -huh. on the playground? Well, you know, there's some sort of accepted, accepted norms, right, in the valley, and clearly, I mean, you go do things, you work, right, ideas are king. Right, so you know, part of it is, boy, you know, you have an idea, I have an idea. Which is the better idea? Can you defend it? And, you know, so part of it's idea, part of it's the community, right? Being able to work with, partner, and you know, find where areas that you can, you know, build on other technologies and relationships uh, as well, right? And clearly, part of it is uh, presence, right? You just got to be there, right, to right. some degree, right? And you know. I don't know how else you could say it, but you know, if you're not there, right? You know, you're not at the, you know, you're not at Berks on the right night. You might miss something, right? <laughs> you, know, it's a, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just a part of the presence there. But I think, you know, ultimately, like anything else, right? It's just being a leader, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, EMC, right? We're a leader, right? You know, long before I showed up, we did the VMware deal, maybe the most transformative you're a 50, 59 deal. Fifty-nine billion dollar market cap leader. Yeah. I mean, you got a big presence. Yeah, right. And that, you know, clearly, we have to do that on a global basis. And your vision of leading the marketplace in that area is uh, contribution, collaboration, and partnering, and competing where you have to, right? Absolutely. You know, it's a world of cooperation, and as you know, the we we expect to continue to You're a for-profit company, see. right? Last yeah, time absolutely. I absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I have a fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders, so right, it's a big deal. So, how do you spend your time at the at these events? So you've, you did your keynote. You're obviously on the cube. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's high on the priority yeah, absolutely. list. Yeah, okay, absolutely. I know. I knew it was. Just you know. <laughs> 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 by the hour. <laughs> um, uh, and then you spend time with customers, I presume, some analysts, you know, what, what else? What else do you do here? Example, walk on the show floor, right? Yeah. I got to see my stuff, you know, I go by the, you know, the booze of my guys, okay, how's that one look, how's this one look, how's the, you know, seeing how the audience reacts to it uh, as well. You know, obviously there's lots of events going on around here as well. You're going to attend, see... you're going to have time to attend some of those? The, oh yeah, uh... yeah, some of the events, and you know, I was just at the Women's Leadership Forum, we have the CIO how's event. How's the customer activity? The data how, how, do, how much time do you spend with customers uh, as a percentage of time, and what are they telling you? What's the uh, 
that. I mean, a lot of the, a, a leader like yourself has to do is kind of listen to customers and then kind of translate what it really means. Yeah. I mean, they're saying, yeah. they might be complaining mm -hmm. or whatever, or asking for features, but ultimately it has to translate to something that's unique to you. Yeah. What are yeah. you hearing from the customers? What are they chirping and how are they, how are they what are they asking for? Uh -huh. Well, there's a lot of, uh, as I think about it, you know, if we would turn the clock back 30 years, and you, you know, who was the IT mindshare leader? IBM. 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 Nobody Everybody got fired else, right? for buying IBM. Today, in this world of cloud and this radical dislocations, where's the thought leadership? Right, who's saying, okay, this is the way to go, right? And this is why, these are the architectural tenets of it and how to go build. And that's very much what we're hearing from our customers. They're, you know, they're all bought in that this cloud thing is disruptive and transformative. And there's investment to dollars to maybe get yeah. there. Right, and I know I have to go there, but how do I go right, on the way? And those are the conversations that we're having. We have a big data discussion. Yeah. Oh, I got all these databases, the shadow IT and stuff going on. What do I do? Right, what's the right strategy to go forward? And that's what I really, really enjoy about our customer interactions. Well, and you guys are doing a great job there. I'm not just sucking up to you because you're on the queue, but I mean, I really think in the enterprise, it's EMC leading that discussion. I mean, it's, you look at the whales, I mean, it's, it's not Oracle, it's really not IBM, it's not HP, it's EMC, VMware, Cisco's in that mix, and it's, it's the Googles and the Facebooks and, mm -hmm. and those guys, and that's sort of a different world, and they're yeah, driving yeah. the consumerization, but, but you're right there, at least in, from an, an enterprise version of that. Yeah. Well, you're walking the exciting. talk, too. I mean, being a thought leader is not about just putting it on paper. Yeah. You really got to kind of walk the talk, uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. In a way, that Silicon Valley is also ideas and, and going for it. And mm -hmm. actually going for it. Whether win, lose, or fail, you know, hopefully more winners and failures, but that's the key, right? And uh, I think the Green Plum acquisition and the big and data the Hadoop movies, announcement like, today, Hadoop you know, it's really, boy, you know. It's, is, is a, is a catapult. To me, that is a, is a surprise, you know, for, for people that think of EMC as an old, stodgy storage company. Well, John, you we've know. seen that in our business, you know, smaller scale, Pat, but when we started working together, John would say, you know, we'd have little debates and arguments, and John say, Dave, you got to stop thinking like an you know, East Coast guy. you got to think like a West Coast guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what's happened to our business sense. Right? Well, we had some failures, but we, you know, we don't have to bury those quick, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. But right. you double down and, and on by the, the way, successes. And right, you know, if you're not failing, you're not taking risks. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and you know, risk taking is part of the industry. Absolutely. And boy, you know, identify failures, move on. Yeah. And, you know, you just got to be. You got you to know when fast. to press the gas pedal when and, not, and, and when to slow right. down, right? Yeah. And take your uh -huh. chances. So. It's good advice for the young people out there. Fail fast, yeah. fail often. And learn from the failures. Learn from it, right. Right, embrace them. Pat, you're a legend on theCUBE now, obviously even uh, industry legend as well in, at Intel. We followed your, your career at EMC, doing great. We love uh, the Green Plum move uh, and looking forward to the next set of acquisitions and uh, stuff you're going to be announcing. Well, thank you thank, very much. Thanks for sharing uh, your time with yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for great coming on, with Pat. you guys. Always again. a pleasure. Great. Hey, thank you very great much. Great to see you. Pat Gelsinger, live from Las Vegas at EMC World.